Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to learn how to play Doomlings, which is going to be a two to six player fast paced card game that's going to take about 20 to 40 minutes to play. We're going to be working as the alien as species there, trying to survive to world's end, gaining traits and attacking your opponent's species to uh, ensure victory. So let's go ahead down to the table here, and I'm going to show you how to play Doomlings. All right, so this is Doomlings. Now, Doomlings is a game you're going to be playing through, and you're going to be trying to have as many of these cards out here as possible to gain as many points and bonus points by the end of the game here. And the way that you're going to set up this game is you're going to shuffle up your traits deck here. You're going to go ahead and shuffle up your age deck here. And you're going to shuffle up your catastrophes here. So there's going to be a bunch of catastrophes that can happen throughout the game. And the game's going to go through three different ages of the game. Also, you'll have your birth of life card, which is going to be the first card that's going to flip. But the way that we're going to set up your ages deck here is we're going to take your non-catastrophe cards, we shuffle them up, and I'm going to deal out three into three sets. The rest of these are going to go back into the box for now. Then we're going to take our catastrophes and we're going to deal one catastrophe into each pile here. All right. Then we're going to shuffle up these piles here and we're going to place one on top of the other. And we're going to go ahead and place the birth of life card on top. And that's going to make up our Ages deck here. So we have our Trait deck ready. We have our Ages deck ready here. Uh, we're also going to place out these Gene Pool cards uh, to each player. And each player is going to get a handy reference card. Now the Gene Pool cards here are going to start on 5. So you're going to place them here. So as time goes by, your Gene Pool is going to increase or decrease. And this will be individual to each player. Then you're going to deal out five cards to each player. All right, now we're ready to play the game. So how do you play the game? Well, someone's going to be the star player, and that's going to be the person to the left of the dealer who dealt out the game. That person is going to remain the first player until a catastrophe appears, and when the catastrophe fear appears, the person to the left will be the next first player. All right, so the way this is going to work is that first player here is going to flip over the first card. Now with the birth of life card, you have your uh, rules on the bottom here that you're always going to do. We're going to show another age here in a second, but this one here just set your gene pool to five, which is correct, and you can play one trait and stabilize uh, to end your turn. And what that means is I'm going to play one trait from my hand. So I have all these cards here and these are the different traits. Now with the cards here, they're going to have a couple different things going. Uh, they're going to have your color. It's going to denote uh, different types here. You're going to have your point value on here. And some of them are going to have variable point values like this kidney. Uh, the value is equal to the number of kidneys in your trait pile, including this one. Uh, you could have uh, some here with other abilities here, giving an opponent one card from your hand. So when I play that, I will be doing that. Uh, at the world's end, play another trait, ignoring, uh, uh, ignoring its action. So I wouldn't be able to do the action part of this. Now you'll notice that these have little A's underneath it to show that they're action. Uh, here's some more at the world's end. Uh, this one here, discard one card from your hand. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, you're going to probably want to cycle through your hand here to get like combos uh, and you don't really have a normal discard mechanism in this game. So at the end of your turn, you're going to be drawn up. So if I play uh, sweat, so now my creatures can sweat um, at the end of my turn here, I'm going to look at and see what my gene pool level is and whatever my gene pool level here is. I'm going to draw up to or down to. So we'll keep the same if I equal it. So if I have four cards here and it says five, I'm going to draw one card. Now, if I had six cards in my hand and my gene pool is five, I would have to discard a card and get down to five. 
if I had five in my hand and it was the end of my turn, I keep just the five cards. I don't draw any more cards. And we're going to keep on going. Everyone takes their turn. And then the first player again is going to flip over the next card. What's going to happen here is you're going to immediately do this. Draw one card after you stabilize. So that's the new rule for the round. You're going to go through, do it again, first player goes. You're going to keep on going until you hit your first catastrophe. When you hit your first catastrophe, you're going to have the thing for the round, but you're also going to have this world end thing. The world end thing, you're going to ignore for round right now because the only one that counts per the normal rules is going to be the bottom part. Now, there are cards that uh, change this. So the last, other than that, the last uh, catastrophe is the one that's going to set this off. And <clears throat> these could be really na nasty. So if this is the world's end one, you're going to discard one blue trade from your trade pile, which is pretty mean. Uh, so this one, this round here, you're going to have negative one. Now, catastrophes are always bad. So this one's going to make everyone lower their gene pool by one. So I'll go down to four and uh, discard two cards from random at your hand from your hand so i'll have to discard two cards randomly from my hand and they'll go out and now the first player is going to be the person to the left of the previous first player and we're going to keep on going placing out these cards uh, trying to create sets uh, you can see that some of them have really cool point values affecting other people's sets and having a lot of fun with that we're going to keep on going until we get to, and you could set these uh, catastrophes off to the side here. So you have one. So I, basically, I, wait, what I think it does is you, say, you should have it, this set here. That's the first catastrophe. Start a new age. Keep on going. Whoops. Yeah. Where'd my deck go? It's in my hand. Uh, keep on going until we get to the next catastrophe. And now everyone has to... Uh, do the bad catastrophe for it part. We're going to go, we're going to switch the first player and go through a round. Then we're going to keep on going. Galactic Drift, Tectonic Shave, al uh, Alien, and then we have our last catastrophe. So when this last catastrophe gets flipped, the world ends. There's no more uh, rounds, turns, it's just over. So we'll go through do this world's end uh, thing at the bottom here, uh, which in this case is everyone has to discard one purple trait from your discard pile. And we'll go ahead on to scoring. And for scoring, you're probably going to want to grab a pen and paper, and you're going to go through and tally up your points. Uh, you're going to have straight up points here from either positive here or negative. You're going to have some variable points here uh, based on uh, criteria that's on here and one thing i didn't mention and that you're going to get throughout the game here are dominant traits a dominant trait is going to have a star in the corner here and you could have up to two dominant traits dominant traits are really cool because they can you can like right here uh you can never get rid of them so other people can't get rid of your dominant trait it'll be there for the whole game here uh, so this one here is just straight up four points, but other than like uh, here right here other than have abilities So you have symbiosis. No one can make you discard this. No one can make this go away You have it forever. You only have two and you can't replace them So be careful which dominant traits you put out, but there's not I mean there's enough There's a, a few dominant traits in this deck. So pretty much whatever you get you're gonna want to put out uh, but this has plus two for every trait in your lowest color count uh, you must have two or more colors if there's a tie, pick one. So uh, this is really cool. A lot of them have abilities. So this one's straight up three points too, also at the end of the game. That's going to be another thing that you're going to add up for your score. Uh, the person with the highest score at the end of the game is going to win. However, what if you have a tie? In the rare case of a tie, you're going to leave it up to fate. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to... Um, Flip the top card here and apply it to your final score. So that I would have got three and my opponent would have got two here that I was tied with. So then I win. So that's how the ties are broken in Doomlings. A couple clarifications. There's going to be action effects. So these are have an A on the bottom here and they're going to do something immediately when you play. There's going to be trade effects. Trade effects are going to be something that just is. So in this case, it's just end game scoring, but something that lasts throughout the game. There's going to be other ones, but they don't have the little A underneath them. 
Uh, you also have your age effects, which are going to be the effect that's going to occur for the age here. So this is a play uh, this age in reverse, first player is last, and last player is first. Uh, so that's what that's going to do. Uh, so you have those three different things going for you. Also, uh, the colors, if you ever want to run about the colors, uh, these are red, these are sparks, uh, these are clouds, uh, the purple here are honeycomb, uh, we also have green vines here, and the gray cards that we had some up here, I don't know where they all went, the gray cards right here are going to be crags. Uh, so those are the, what the colors mean in the game. Not that that matters so much, but uh, it's just neat. All right, so if you ever wonder if there's a rules conflict, how that works, the way it works is ages are number one. So ages beat everything. Next is going to be your traits, and last is going to be the survival guide, which is the regular rules. So that's going to be how that uh, works out. And that is Doomlings. Thank you for watching.